Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. My guests are here. Free appraisals. I don't know what's coming. Everything's unscripted. I don't know what objects they're going to show me. We're going to get started. Hold up your objects. Let's see who we're going to choose. I need your cameras to be horizontal. Let's see those objects. Hold them right up to the camera so I can choose. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Let's start with this pot right down here. The woman wearing black, a black short sleeve shirt and that pot. How did you acquire that piece of pottery? Hi. Um, I got this at goodwill.com. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Laura. Can you hold it up, Laura, so we can see the object? From Maryland. Can you back up so we can see the object? And up a little higher. You need to back up, honey. There you go. So you bought it at goodwill.com online, right? Yep. How much did you pay? 42. What made you like it? Well, it was marked for real. Gold ceramic vase. And I clicked on the thumbnail and went, that's not for real. Right, that's it's not for real at all. For real no. is a type of glass made by, uh, introduced by Louis Comfort Tiffany. So they had the, they had the, the description incorrect. Exactly. Can so I, I see I, the object, Laura? It's I'm, nice to see your face, but I need to see the object, honey. You keep putting it down. There you go. All right. So, so it's marked for real and you said, well, it's a nice piece. It's a good color. Can you back it up a little bit, please? There you go. All right. So is there a mark on the bottom of this piece? No. Okay. So they make the incorrect uh, description mm -hmm. and you decide that you're going to basically, you know, buy it for $42. Well, I bid on it yeah. because I said, this is not for real. This is adventuring. Right. It's not ceramic. Right. It's glass. Right. And it's not just glass. It's Murano. <laughs> I can tell well, it's, it's not marked. It's Murano style. It's a Venturine. It's Murano style. Yes. So I would say value on that piece about $150 in the retail market right now. You did very well for 42 based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold. So good for you and good for noticing that the piece, in fact, wasn't what they said it was. So you've got to look, use those eyes. Will you answer my question of the day, please? Sure. Uh, Twitter or Facebook? Which do you prefer? Social media. Ooh, Facebook, because I don't Facebook. really do Twitter. Okay, but good to see I you. Ask, Thank you very ask, much. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah, if quickly. I can verify this is Murano, would that be worth more? Uh, probably it would be worth more. I don't know how you're going to verify it. Okay. <laughs> so, more. you know, but uh, it would be difficult for you to verify that one. Thanks. Uh, a lot of things about it, remember, there are a lot of folks who will just say, oh, it's Murano, it's Murano, it's Murano. While Murano is very, very popular, markings are very important when it comes to those. And most of those are labels for that time period. But she was very smart in, find, in finding something that was incorrect in terms of the description. Uh, yes, well, we yes, we did a private Zoom class last night. A lot of fun. I've done a lot of them. They're sold out. There's others coming up, but those those last ones were sold out. So I'm glad everybody had fun. I had a great time. We had a great time doing the private class. So I hope you'll join me on one of them. And all of those are listed at my events page at drlorivee.com. Hi, everybody. How are you? Lots Hello. Of glass. Let's try this piece of purple glass. Uh, the woman who has the blue um, shirt on. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good, hon. Can you hold your camera horizontally, please? Can the camera go horizontally? The other way. Looks like your, your screen is locked. Well, if you can unlock your screen so I can see it horizontally, you're saying, why do you want to do that, Dr. Ward? I want you all to be able to see it well on the video. So here's something else. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Where are you calling from? What's your first name? Uh, my name is Clara and I live in Kentucky. Hi, Clara. Where in Kentucky? Are you like Lexington? Are you Louisville? Where are you? Louisville. 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 Area. Louisville. Louisville. You know, area. I've appeared there many times in Louisville and learning how to say it properly. You better do that when you get off the airplane, right? That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> nice to see you, Clara. So what Thank have you, you got there, hon? This uh, 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 butter dish, I believe, and it's a uh, depression and it's, I believe the style is Miss America. Good for you. Good for you. So you have the, you have the plate and then this is the dome that goes on top of it, correct? Yes. Beautiful. So, oh, I see. You've got you've got the bowl right there in your hand. The way you were holding it, I didn't see that. Right yes. in front of the camera. There you go. And if you'll hold that bowl, there it is. Perfect. Stay right there. 
Nice, nice. So you've got that butter dish. How'd you acquire it? My great aunt bought it during the Depression. Wow. <laughs> and and I have a set. I don't know if it's complete because I don't know what all was in a set. Okay, so you have a set of Miss America. Let's just talk about the butter the butter dish. First of all, you've got that nice round bowl, right? And then usually yeah. there's another glass plate that goes over it with ceramic butter dishes as well as glass, depression glass butter dishes. So bought in the 1930s, and then the different patterns relate, of course, to that, to that, the different names of the patterns relate to that pattern or that decoration. So Miss America is relatively well known. Can you show us the top of this, please? So it's near the camera. There you go. There it is. So you can see that finial and that finial is very important for design because it's sort of like the crescendo or the end, of course, or the big finale of these objects. So the, you know, the, the finial is very important and it has to be very well done. That's quite beautiful. I always tell people what to look for. So what do you look for? You look for the color, you look for the pattern, you look for the maker when it comes to depression glass and you look for the in the uh, intricacy of design of the finial or of course of the banding, the round. If you're talking about plates, it's around the, the edge of the plate. You gotta know what yeah. to look for. Yeah. So that plate alone, that butter dish, just top and bottom with, and then you put, you'd put ice in the bowl. You put that, that piece of plate, that piece of glass on top. And then the butter sits on that, doesn't sit in the ice. Some people don't bother with that extra plate and it just sits in the ice to keep it cold. Value on your butter dish, $75, just for the butter dish with the dome, because you have specific provenance. It dates back to your family. You can trace it back to the 30s. It's not a reproduction from the 70s. No, Based on no. actual sales records. No. Very nice. And because you said, Clara, that you have the whole set or even a partial set, you increase right. value a little bit because you have other pieces of the same pattern. That's and, important, and, too. Yes. I always say keep sets intact. So keep sets intact. Uh, will you answer my question of the day about social media? Do you like Twitter uh, Facebook. or Facebook? Facebook. Facebook. I don't do Twitter. Facebook. Okay. Do you uh, get in touch with friends and family, grandkids and great grandkids and stuff on that on Facebook? Yes. 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 A lot of people do. do that. You can watch the little kids grow, right? Even if you're not That's nearby. Right. That's, <laughs> That's right. right. So nice to see you, Clara. Thank you. That's Thank a beautiful you. piece. Thank you very much. My pleasure. So, you know, no chips, no cracks, no inclusion, scratches, abrasions, all those museum words, you know. So basically, I want you to look for quality and quality comes with high quality manufacturers, particularly in depression glass. Don't forget the color has to be consistent. It's a lot about the color. A lot of value is in that color. If the color is off a little bit or if the color isn't one of the popular colors, you're not going to see the value. That color was quite beautiful. And then, of course, the pattern's important. And how? Do, where do I tell you all this information? Here and on my newsletter. Where's my newsletter? DrLoriV.com. So here's my next guest. Hi, Dr. Hi, Lori here. How are you, Sam? Great. How are you doing? Good. Where are you calling from again? Indiana. Okay, what have you got? Did you change your hat? You had a different I hat did. on the other day. I was, I was wearing my boonie hat the last time, and today I'm wearing my usual the beret. And do you have a Dr. Lori t-shirt? I don't yet. I, well, you better get one. You better get I'm a mug. Get, what are you I'm doing? Get, you're not supporting the channel. You're getting all these free appraisals, and you're not supporting the channel, Sam. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Dr. Lori. I have disappointed the... <laughs> you're sorry i'm gonna get a lousy you're sorry go buy a shirt <laughs> well, I can't buy one right now unless all right you go ahead i'm gonna give you this appraisal see what you can do oh i these things these things are everywhere where did you get Martin? this the goodwill i got this at a, a different flea market than i got my last hearings okay is there any marking on it Unfortunately, no, and that's part of why I why I brought it to you was because okay. I was just very curious uh, if you could give insight into like is that this is like masking tape shape, yeah, on the back like someone maybe took a mold of an authentic one and did a, a reproduction. But I think that's exactly what you've got. Very good, good eye. Yeah, that's exactly what you've got. So you've basically got someone who is copying a different one. So they took a mold of something. It's people do it all the time. I think it's very similar to that medieval piece we just that sort of quasi-medieval piece we just had. 
it's somebody, it's Uncle Wilbur working in the basement kind of thing. So, you know, it's nice. It's not hurting anybody, but it's not going to be significant in terms of the artistry. It's not going to be significant in terms, of course, of who made it either. It's probably an amateur piece. I would say value on it about $25. How much did you pay? Uh, too much. $29. Oh, all right. Well, you paid retail. Do you like cats? Do you like it? I, I do. And I actually grew to like it more and more since I got it. I okay. bought it with the, the idea that I might be able to flip it, but that if I couldn't, I'd be pretty okay with it. So Okay. All right. I got it. I would say you could try to get 30 bucks out of it. I don't think you will, but you could try. Yeah, you could try anything, but I would say retail value based on actual sales records, 25 bucks. And um, which do you like better, Twitter or Facebook? Neither. I'm an Instagrammer. I don't, oh, I don't, you're, I, you're, I, I, I want to get away from social media, honestly, even Instagram. But if I had to pick, I'd say that one. <laughs> okay. So you like the initial photo. You like image, image, image. I do. I'd, ra I'd rather uh, not uh, see all the stuff people want me to read. <laughs> right. Well, we're on everything. So, you know, I'm everywhere. So you can check me out on Instagram, too. Nice to see you. Get a T-shirt. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Nice to see you. So Sam will support the channel, I'm sure. And if others of you want to, you can, of course, do that at the specials and shopping page at drlorivee.com. And um, it's easy to do that uh, when you buy one of my products, like a loop or the Presidium Gem Tester or storage materials or whatever it might be. I do get compensation. And of course, if you want one of the T-shirts or such, uh, you can see that also as you scroll down the specials and shop page. So great to see all of you. What fun we're having. Um, and I've got my guests and here's my next guest. Again, everything's unscripted. I don't know what's coming. So this is new to me as it is to you. Hi. Hi, Dr. Lori. Nice to see you. So you tell too. me, where are you calling from? And can I see your object? Can you hold it up? Sure, sorry. That's all right. Um, my name is Terrell. Okay, so Terrell's got this blue piece and then we have this purple glass piece. Got purple glass piece, what's your name? My name is Laura. Hi, Laura. And then we've got another purple glass piece. So one is one is uh, slag glass and one is actually uh, a vase. So tell me about the vase. What's your name? Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. So, Hi. Stephanie, do you, do, you like, um, do you like this piece that you purchased? Yes, I love it. How much did you pay? $10 at an estate sale. $10. And Laura, how much did you pay for the picture? $2 at a yard sale. $2 at a yard sale. And then how much did you pay for the blue bowl with the flowers? I think it was about eight from Goodwill. Okay, so eight from Goodwill. So we put a lot of money into the blue bowl. So we're going to let the two glass people wait a second. Sit tight. I'll come right back. <laughs> Sorry. Tell me about this blue bowl. Eight dollars. That's kind of a lot for a ceramic bowl. I know it's uh it's an amphoric an amphora sorry uh, so, Czechoslovakia. So that's why you bought it. That's I I was just learning and I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, well, did you did you buy it because you like it? Yeah, it's really pretty. Um, okay, it's only pretty. One thing that there's a white mark there on it, but it's under the glaze, so it was during manufacturing. I'm assuming. Yeah, so that's, that's not great, only, but it's not terrible. Difficult. I mean, in most people. I don't put anything in anything. I don't like to put something in a bowl. I like it to be a bowl. I'm an object person, so I'm a yeah. purist. But people don't have to go by me with that. If you wanted to put something in it, you could. It's used. It could be utilized like that. What I like about this piece is right where you're showing the camera. Don't do anything. So basically what I like is these inside lines. It's like an outline of the actual ceramic underneath. I like that as you see it. So that's a nice, that's a nice element. I like the textural element. Can you stop moving it? Thank Sorry. You. Oh, that's okay. But basically, I like the outlines. I like the textural element. There's a contrast between the blue and the texture of the blue. And of course, the different colors with the outline of those flowers. The reason why I ask you to stop moving it is I understand you want to show me all of it, but I want everybody to get a good look so I can teach them what to look for because the beauty of this channel is this. So you guys can get my expertise so I can show you what to look for. So the next time you're in that thrift store, that yard sale, that antique shop, you don't miss quality. That's a beautiful piece. Now, when I see Czechoslovakian pieces of ceramics, I'd really rather see a Czechoslovakian piece of glass, but that piece is quite nice. I would say value on that piece, $65 for your $8 investment. So that's almost eight okay. times what you paid. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. My you question too. of the day is Twitter or Facebook? Um, I Facebook. I've got kids and grandkids um, 
all over Ontario. So yeah. So it's nice to see everybody. That's and the family deal, right? in Cornwall, UK. So yeah, it's oh, uh, yeah, Cornwall is nice beautiful. Go take a trip to Cornwall. It's beautiful. That <laughs> is the dream. <laughs> Make the dream happen. Go to the thrift store. Buy the stuff I tell you to buy. Hey. Use my <laughs> tips. Make the money and go on a trip and get out of here. Definitely. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you. All you right. too. My take pleasure. Care. Let's take a look at that slag glass pitcher. We can get back to that purple pitcher, maybe with Laura. Hi, Laura. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well, Dr. Lori. How about yourself? I'm well, sweetheart. Thanks for your patience. Where are you calling from? I live in Salt Lake City, Utah. Hey, the Great Salt Lake. That's you a great what? city. That's a great city. Yeah, yeah, I had a wonderful time there. So tell me, how'd you acquire this slag glass molded pitcher? It well, it was at a yard sale. And I just love pretty glass. Two bucks, so, you said? Two bucks. Did I remember that right? How tall is that? Is that six inches or eight inches? Um, eight and a half. And Laura, what is that machine behind you? <laughs> that is a giant fan because it's hot as sin in Salt Lake. <laughs> wow, that's a giant fan. I thought maybe it was like a one of a dehumidifier or one of those room purifiers or something that is over my head in technology. I don't have a lot of machines. I'm not big <laughs> on machines. Wow. So it's hot, huh? Yeah. Super yeah. Hot. All right. Well, it's beautiful there, though. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. All right. So let's see what we've got. Uh, this piece is six inches, eight inches, eight and a half ish. I'm sorry, I was taken aback by the fan. <laughs> so I got off on a tangent. So okay, I like the impressed element. I like, of course, in the cartouche or that big circle, which is called a cartouche. You have, of course, a um, a landscape image with a little house on the front. Mm -hmm. And then you'll notice how this is. So where the spout is, right underneath the spout is decoration. Then it's got a windmill here. Has it got a mark on the bottom of the manufacturer? It like does. Northwood. Um, well, it doesn't have anything on the bottom, but there it came with this inside. And okay. then there is, let me get this up. So there's can, a label? Yeah, there's a label. So what does all this say since we can't see it? It says purple slag glass circa 1850 by Imperial. It's definitely imperial, but I don't think it's 1850. I think it's a little bit later, 1875 or so. They lied and, uh, to me. And, I'm sorry? They lied to me. Well, I don't think they're lying to you. I think they're not great researchers. Yeah. <laughs> Are they lying? A little bit, but they're trying, right? So I'm trying not to call people liars, even though I've met a lot of liars. But I'm telling you, that particular piece is a little bit later, and here's why. The type of slag doesn't come into vogue until a little bit later in the 19th century. It's still a 19th century piece, right, for $2, right, worth 200 Oh, sweet. So a hey, hundred times, a hundred times. It's gorgeous. But no, woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo, <laughs> right? No chips, no cracks, no inclusions. And you can, of course, mark that piece to Imperial. Here's why. Here's what's fantastic about it. Here's what makes it luscious, right? It's all of that work in the cartouche because that particular mold yeah. element has to be all carved out. Then you have, again, this nice swoosh at the bottom, right? Which almost kind of says to you, it, it reminds you sort of of a winter scene. So it gives you a little bit of a weather idea from the glass. So that's really quite nicely done. And it's not just one cartouche just in one area, but it's actually three, correct? Yeah, there are three. Like three, yeah. Yes. And then the handle is pretty heavy. And then you can see the striations. You can match these up. It's not difficult to find them. Did you try to find it online? Um, I did, but I, I've been listening to you and I don't want to go offline evaluations because uh -huh. they don't know what the heck they're talking about. Well, that's true. That's true. But I mean, you can find the pattern easily enough. But a lot of times what happens is you have folks who are either don't know what the value is and don't know the market. So they're evaluating it and listing it too low. And then, of course, you have people who are trying to inflate the, the market because they've got an inventory of millions of them back in their shop. And they're trying to say it's worth more than it really is. And then you get into trouble. So my values are always based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold. Has to have sold. That's what we want. My opinion on that, very good for two bucks. Nice. May I ask a question, Dr. Lori? Sure, honey, go. Um, I love glass. I love glassware, especially the pretty colors. But yes. what should, I know, like you said, the the serrated glass, like the cut glass. But yes. what should I be looking for as far as like glass colored, that's valuable to resell? Like colored glass? Yeah. Colored glass, I liked case glass. I love Murano. I think you should also look for, I like the American Brilliant Cut stuff because I think the American Brilliant Cut stuff is going to come back. 
I like slag glass, but we're coming out of the revival of slag glass period. You know, that revival period was, you know, 2010 to 2020. So we're coming away from slag glass. So this, this is why it's going to be low. It's going to be low for a while. Then, of course, it will come back. I also like, um, I like brand names. So I like those names. I like the Libby. I like the Imperial. I like the Northwood. I like Hawks. I like Dorflinger. I like a lot of them. But for colored glass, if you like it, then I want you to, of course, choose what you like. And if you like a color scheme or if you like certain sets, I want you to, or certain patterns, I want you to build patterns, right? Okay. You don't just get one of these and one of those and one of them because that's clutter. You want to build collections which have a theme or a relationship in some way, whether that's color or by pattern or by manufacturer. Okay. Perfect. Does that help? Thank you so much. I hope that helps. It's way helpful. I got one more question for you, Facebook or Twitter? Um, actually, I got banned from Twitter. Don't know what I did. So Facebook by <laughs> default. <laughs> oh, well then you don't like Twitter, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. I, don't... I think, you know, sometimes that kind of stuff happens. You don't know why, you know, yeah. you just don't know why. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but you know what? There's so many other social media things and you can always stick here with me. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> nice to see you. Take Thanks care. For Thanks so much. And thanks for, of course, your support of the channel. So I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. What fun we're having looking at your art, antiques, and collectibles. My guests are here and we're just looking at their stuff. Hi, honey. Hi. Stephanie, thank you. Stephanie, right? Yes. Thank you for your patience, sweetie. Look at that big clock. You know, I wouldn't be late if I had that big clock in my house. <laughs> you would think I wouldn't be late too, but you know, I'm still late. Well, if, you have, if you have kids, that's what makes you late because kids are busy, right? Four kids under six. Oh. Yep. Four kids. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Crazy. Okay. I have nieces okay. and nephews. That's enough for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> show me, tell me a little bit about this piece of case glass. This is very nice. It's beautiful. I bought it at an estate sale for ten dollars. Wow. Uh, of course, I'm hoping it's Murano, but it is not marked. There's no. It is sticker. Murano. It is Murano. It is Murano. It's very nice. I like it. Beautiful so, Venetian Italian glass. So nice. I like so that. Beautiful. Oh, of I mean, course, hand blown. Nice. Yes. And it's a kind of a purple, like a light eggplant color. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. my favorite color. So I couldn't, I couldn't leave it there. I had to. Well, for ten dollars, you shouldn't leave it there. Now, for are you sure. going to hold on to it for yourself? I am debating whether to resell or to keep it because I do love it so much. But I did buy it for resale, so you know, I'm not sure yet. You know, I would like our moms out there to do a little bit more for themselves. I know. It's I'd like true. to see you hang on to that. You're, I love it. I love it. You're caressing it. You love it. Why do you, if you don't have to sell it and you know, the kids are still eating, then why can't you keep it for 10 bucks? Right. I know, right. So I, I do so. have a Fenton piece back here that I might keep as well. Yeah. All right. Well, you might have to keep the Fenton piece too, but you have to treat yourself a little bit, especially with all you do in raising, you know, the next generation. So I think moms are special. So you're going to have to do that. Thank do you. that for me. Keep it. Oh, thank now you. you Value on it, about $125, and it dates to the 1970s. It's not a typical mid-century modern piece. It dates a little bit later. I do like the way it's handled. Here's what you look for. You look for the, the actual, the pattern that repeats, and it has to repeat geometrically. So what does that mean? So even though it's blown, right, even though it's blown, it looks very fanciful, looks very organic or biomorphic uh -huh. or curvy. Okay. Look at how each one of those lines is, is actually equidistant from the other. So there's a geometry to putting this together. I, I like see. that very, very much. And now is that how you identified that it was Murano? I identified it for Murano by color, by style, and also by the way in which you had the pull at the top. Okay. So it's, it's not just every single one is the same. That usually happens more in Bohemian and Czech glass. But here, you know, uh, the Venetians are pretty confident. So they're able to do that and pull that up. The other thing that that does is it, it makes it act as a tulipary. And if you haven't heard that word, it's a tulipary, which is a type of vase that allows the stem to stay standing up. So stems mm -hmm. of like tulips that go down, they kind of droop, you know, mm -hmm. those, that piece of glass, if you wanted to put, put flowers in it, will allow the flower stems to stay straight so that the actual bouquet oh. looks very nice. The arrangement yeah. looks very nice. So yeah. that's the reason for that. That's pretty nice. I would say, um, as I said, value on it in that 125, 150 range, probably more like 125, 1970s okay. Murano Venetian glass. 
Facebook or uh, Twitter? What's oh, your... Facebook. Facebook, hands down. And yes. Facebook is fun for you. Why? Uh, because it's where I connect with most of the people I know, my family that lives in other states. I'm not on Twitter at all. So Facebook for sure. And cool. Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. That's Thank great. You. I like to see that. Yeah. Thanks for being with me, Stephanie. I appreciate it. Kiss those kids. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Does Murano ever have a small hollow on the bottom for us? It always sanded flat like hers. Um, a pontil on the bottom is not atypical of Murano glass and many other types of glass, which is where the blow pipe was, right? Where they blew through it. And then after they're done making the form, they break that off. And then sometimes that is smoothed down and sometimes it's left a little bit sharp, but usually not very sharp. Um, and oftentimes with Murano, the newer pieces are oftentimes actually very, very smooth. So yes, you can find it in both ways. And remember that term Murano is for a lot of pieces from Venice, not just the ones that are from the famous, of course, um, furnaces, glass furnaces of Murano, which date back to the 1200s AD. So you're looking at a lot of different types of pieces, but Italian glass is very, very popular. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. What have you got, hon? I've got no audio on you, no audio. Oh, hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's your oh. name? Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm Jesse. I'm calling from Peoria, Illinois. Hi, Jesse. Uh, my husband and I, we like to uh, see who could get the this cheapest item for the most value. Oh, good for you. And okay. actually, this is his item. Can you back up so I can see all of it? Show it to mm -hmm. me from the side. Yes. Okay. So that's and, his and item. we didn't know what it was. And I said maybe it was some kind of stone. And he said... Maybe it's some kind of horn, but he, him and he loved it. And uh, it's got the, the lion on it. It, yeah. it. it doesn't have any, anything on there, but he bought it for $12 and 50 cents. So, and it's worth about $25. Okay. It's okay. a reproduction Okay. Uh, the ancient Etruscan form, which of okay. course are the ancient around the, the time prior to, of course, the Romans, okay. the Etruscans in, in Italy, and it's a reproduction of that form. It looks like it's actually uh, carved out of a stone, and I would say value on that piece about 25 bucks. So tell him back to the drawing board. You better watch more of my videos. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I beat him because I did Trafari. <laughs> That was smart. You've been watching my videos. <laughs> I have. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice Facebook to see you. or Twitter? Facebook, definitely. Facebook, definitely. Oh, what fun, what fun. My guests are here. Lots to, to look at. Lots to know what to look for. I'm teaching you that too. I'm Dr. Lori. Thanks for being with me. See you next time.